Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Um, I filmed a video that I was going to share with you and then I realized as I was going to edit it, I did something different. What did I do? I was shooting video outside, forgot to change the settings when I came inside. It's not like you can't actually see the picture, but the quality is not good. And unfortunately, it's not really a video I can refilm. So yeah, that video is pointless. Or maybe what I might do is actually go in the garbage truck is driving by. It's always very loud. Um, I might edit it for Patreon just as a bonus video, not as like any kind of normal content. But I like noticed when I was filming that something was off, but it wasn't clicking in my brain what was going on. So my bad. Um, anyway, so I thought I would share some collections because in September the Read Your Bookshelf Challenge prompt is to read a collection and I have a bunch of possibilities here, some I've read that I would like to recommend, some I haven't read that I might pick up and yeah, I just kind of started pulling different books off my shelf that count as collections. So if you haven't joined the Read Your Bookshelf Challenge, it's not too late. There's a $100 gift card that I'm going to be giving out at the beginning of next year after the challenge is over guess I like to do that every year. So let's dive into this. I need to grab a couple more books here actually. So you can take collection however you want. I have a few different options here if you want to spin it a different way. I'm okay with that. If you don't finish your collection, like some of these books that I'm going to be sharing are large, I'm also okay with that. Um, so my first group of things I want to share about is poetry. Okay, so I own a number of different poetry collections. I love poetry. I like, I love the poetry that I love. I don't love all poetry. Um, but I have been reading through slash haven't been good at it this summer. Uh, a poem for every day of the year. This is e edited by Ali Isiri. Not really sure how to say her name, honestly. And I am enjoying this collection. It is, as it says, it's a poem for every day of the year, but she also has a little blurb at the beginning before each poem telling like why it's fitting for that day or a little bit of history about the poem and yeah unfortunately i stopped reading oh in june so it's not that bad um but i would like to continue this for sure i also recently purchased and haven't read but really want to read this whole thing the complete poems of emily dickinson she is my favorite poetry poet poet not my favorite poetry okay yes words um favorite poet i love her short lines like that's so many different poems on one page and i love that she talks so much about nature in her poems and i love that i have a complete collection of her poems this is the one i really want to read for september obviously I'm not going to finish it but i would love to go through and start annotating and highlighting and tabbing like all my favorite poems i would really like to do that also, I did mention this in the other video that I filmed, but there is a cricket right outside my window, so I'm sorry if you're hearing that. Okay, and then another poetry book that I have is Friends, a poem for every day of the year, and I, spoiler, I have another poetry collection by this editor coming in my next book haul. Um, this one is edited by Jane McMorland Hunter, and she is my favorite editor, I think. I didn't get very far in here either. Um... April. I'm in April, but I have tabbed so many poems that I have enjoyed. Let's see if it will focus. Not sure you can see all those, but I feel like she just, maybe because they're all about friends and friendship, but I feel like she's just done a really good job with them. So I just from Book Outlet found her nature. Um, I think it's nature, a poem for every day of the year, and they're all about nature. So yeah, excited to start that. That might be another one to start for September. We'll see. So those are like my main poetry collections, at least the ones I want to highlight right now. I would recommend all of those, although I haven't actually read the Emily Dickinson one, but I love a bunch of her poems. Then I've got a few things that are kind of out of the ordinary here. So I have my Shirley Jackson collection. These are short stories, essays, and other writings. Some of it's like humorous. <laughs> one that I read during the short story, what month did we do the short stories? March, April, May, one of those, uh, was all about her kitchen utensils. And it's called Here I Am Washing Dishes Again, and all about uh, a lot of a lot of attention on her forks. It was hilarious. Uh, so I don't really know how to categorize this because it covers a few different things, but it's hilarious. 
Another collection that I have that I've read some of but not all of is Agatha Christie's Complete Secret Notebooks. So she, they found, when she died in 1976, they found, what was it, 73 private notebooks where she just had random notes about these mysteries. So they have organized it so that every, not every book, but a lot of her books that she has written, they share the notes that they found in the notebooks. And they're like some notes in notebook number 23 and some in number 50 and some in number two. And so, and her writing is atrocious. There is some, well, those are kids upstairs. I mean, I feel like this is one of her better pages, but to have translated what she wrote there is impressive. And then to do that for 73 notebooks, um, yeah, this is really good. And I know that there's, he, um, John Curran has also done another book on her. So that one will be like to add to my list eventually. And I just shared this book. So this is a collection of short stories based on a book, a world. Um, I just shared this over on Patreon because I did a little free library tour and I found this book. So this is four and it is short stories from the Divergent series kind of set in that world based on those characters maybe. I haven't read it. I think there are seven short stories. So this is like one I could actually read the entire thing through during September. So this is another option. Okay, and then I think the rest on the stack are just short story collections. So I have the Flannery O'Connor Complete Short Stories. I feel like I need to at least read one of these in September because I've never read anything by her. And I know so many people on booktube really love her. And I feel like I'm either going to really love her or really not. And I need to know where I fall. I have no idea what kind of books or like stories she writes. I don't really know anything about her. So I need to know something. One of my favorite short story collections of all time is The Lottery and Other Stories because The Lottery is the most brilliant short story ever written, I would say. Um, and some of these are interesting. They're like kind of in that gothic horror um, range. I think all of them, I haven't read all of this. I've read maybe like half and I think they all kind of have that vibe to them. Runner up for the most brilliant short story ever written, but definitely not even close, is The Yellow Wallpaper. And this also has other short stories by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. And I've read The Yellow Wallpaper, but I haven't read any of her other books, so or other short stories, so I could read this as well. The Yellow Wallpaper is an interesting look at how people who had, I think the character is like struggling with depression and it's kind of autobiographical by Agra graphical oh man struggling struggling today seriously the other video i filmed i talked a lot better um and then i went for a walk in the rain so now my hair is really frizzy today was just not meant to be i thought about skipping this video but i really i didn't want to miss it i really enjoy sharing videos here um yes it's about depression i think and how they treated patients and this was story was revolutionary in how they changed how they treated people who were struggling with things like depression Okay, and then we've got a bunch of murder mystery, or just mystery short stories. Father Brown and Other Essential Tales. I've read a few of these. I've read that many. 62 pages in. These are a lot of fun. And I mean, would any short story collection of mine be even possible without sharing Miss Marple? So I've got the complete Miss Marple short stories. And I have the complete Hercule Poirot short stories. So both of those, I've read a number of each of these in various other places, but I haven't read through either of these books. Some more classic short story collections I have. I have Classic Tales of Detection and Adventure by Edgar Allan Poe. This one I think has like five of his short stories and I've read uh, a couple of them, I think. And then I have The Importance of Being Earnest and Other Place. And I have been wanting to read The Importance of Being Earnest since Krista read it on one of her reading sprints and i want to say it was like victober was it that long ago like almost a year ago already maybe um so i've been wanting to read it ever since then and i got the book and i haven't read it so this would be another collection that i could pick up and then my last collection that i want to highlight is this huge and awesome big the black lizard big book of locked room mysteries this is probably the best combination of short stories that I have ever read. Um, I love short stories written by a specific author because you know what you're getting into. You know 
you like Agatha Christie or you like Shirley Jackson or whatever. But this has so many different authors and I have read a number of the short stories and really enjoyed almost all of them. You're gonna have some duds here and there. But what I really like is how they have laid out this book. And this author has a few more collections of books, but they're like, one of them is like zombie stories and the other one is something in a similar vein where I'm, I'm not very interested, but um, I love what he did here. So he's got it um, broken down into different sections based on the type of mystery or, yeah, they're locked room mystery. So I think they might all be murders, but don't quote me on that. So the first section is called Familiar as the Rose in Spring, and they're the most popular and frequently reprinted impossible crime stories of all time. I've read three out of those. Um, and then there is, this was the unkindest cut of all. Stabbing in a completely sealed environment appears to be the most common murder method. Then you've got footprints in the sands of time. Is there a more baffling scenario than to find a body in the smooth sand or snow with no footprints leading to or from the victim? And so like shoot if you must is it may not be terribly original, but shooting someone tends to be pretty effective. And so they're broken down into how the mysteries happened. And then there's one. It says, our final hope is flat despair. Some stories simply can't be categorized. So I really enjoy this bind up. If you like murder mysteries and short stories, definitely see if you can get your hands on this collection because it, this is a lot of fun. Okay, so there you have it. There's some ideas for you guys, some ideas of what I might be reading. I'm going to be picking my TBR soon, so I gotta figure out kind of which ones I want to focus on, or if I'm going to be just like starting and reading from a bit of poetry books, uh, a little bit from a bunch of them, or what I'm going to be doing. So make sure if you are joining in on the challenge to head over to the website, I'll leave it linked below, and you can enter to win the $100 giveaway. So thanks so much for being here, guys.